Welcome back to more uh, crazy Reddit stories. Uh, if you haven't been here before, uh, we read Reddit stories and we react to them, we freak out, we go, what? And then uh, that's it. Today my guests are uh, Noah and Courtney. And uh, the theme today <laughs> is uh, siblings. And uh, both of you have siblings, right? I, Noah, mm -hmm. you have three brothers. I, I, you, I have yeah. two brothers. I'm Sorry. the third brother. That's right, I got confused, yeah. yeah. That's okay, add another, why not? I yeah, think yeah. there's only two. Okay, you think, have two brothers you and, yeah. and Courtney. And I'm an absolute hoarder of siblings. <laughs> I have six siblings. I I have two older brothers, but they're so much older that they are they are my brothers, but they, they're almost more like I, I looked up to them growing up. There wasn't like sibling rivalry because I was so much younger than them. What's the age difference between you and the oldest? Uh, 11 years. 11? And then eight years. And then eight. Yeah, no, there's, there's no drama, you know? They're so you never were like, oh, that's my top, give it back. You're wearing no. my top right now. They're, they're great. I mean, they are both smelly and ugly and stupid, <laughs> but. <laughs> and you see that one of them like No, I know, I know, it, I know. Yeah. One of my brothers watches all of our videos, and uh, so, so yeah, you're smelly. That's sweet. What a yeah. smelly sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> Do any of your siblings watch Smosh? Are they gonna see this? Um, I don't know if they've started watching this show, okay. but they might. My dad watches everything. Okay. Yeah, they've, they've seen some stuff. The one that I know that they've watched is the one they were in. Right. Which was an episode of Put It In My Mouth where I made them try Sir Strumming. Three handsome oh, wow. guys was... eating fish. Oh, uh, you're so it's sweet. Rough. <laughs> it's it's like two and a half. And also, for people who don't know this, you and all your brothers were born on Valentine's Day. Born on Valentine's Day, uh, different all years. All three of you. Yeah, yeah. I was born at 11.55 at night. Wow. Yeah, she was really happened. like, I must keep it going. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. All right. Uh, yeah. Well, let's get into this. Let's see some other sibling stories here. First one. Am I the asshole for getting gifts for my sister's dogs and not her child? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. All right. Uh, this is, was posted on Am I the Asshole and also ended up on Am I the Devil. Ooh. So it's gonna be rough. Ooh. Not surprised. I've always made it very clear to all my family members that I don't like children. They're loud and annoying and personally, I can't stand them. I do, however, adore dogs with all my heart. That also has been made clear to them. Recently, my sister had a child. Also been made clear. <laughs> Recently, my sister had a child, and although I've spent time with it, I'm sorry. You do not dehumanize I the didn't, child. I did not read that wrong. Uh, although I've spent time with it, my opinions on children remained unchanged. For the first time since the childbirth, my sister invited family over for dinner. Usually when this happens, I bring some gifts for the pups. Nothing big, just some toys or treats or something. This time though, I, I brought over some gifts for them. For some reason, this made my sister very angry. She went off on me and started yelling about how I don't care about my niece and love the dogs more than her. I replied that it should have been pretty obvious. This made the situation worse and she screamed at me about being a bad sister for not contributing towards the child's growth and that I've offered to care for their puppies every chance I get, but I've never come even, uh, never even come to visit their child since the birth. That pissed me off and I ended up saying some pretty mean things. Basically, just because she and her husband couldn't keep it in their pants, I'm not going to change my values in my life. Since then, she stopped talking to me and has told my mother that until I apologize, she will continue ignoring me. The rest of my family think, uh, thinks I was being an asshole for barely looking at the child, even though they've known since I was like 10 that I dislike children. I freaking hate myself. <laughs> <laughs> What happened uh, to them? Oh I don't God. know if I was in the wrong in this one. I didn't even say anything bad about the child. I was just apathetic towards it. But maybe she felt bad because she thought I hated her child. Or maybe since she and I were very close, she expected me to pull, some, pull more weight. I've behaved like this to other children too, but I don't know why she expected hers to be special or different. We used to be really close and I want to go back to things. But I also don't want to pretend that I care about a child just because it came out of her. Uh, there's an edit. No one else has had brought anything either since it was supposed to be an informal get together. I always bring something for the puppies, so I did this time as well, but this time it pissed her off. And yes, calling her an it was an asshole move, I accept that. I was still a bit mad when I wrote this. Jesus Christ. Uh, I know people who are like, oh yeah, I don't, I don't like kids, like mm. whatever, and that's fine to be like, oh, I, I, they're loud and smelly and stuff and I'm whatever. But she seems like she like, this is weird. It's like that's your. You also are not respecting or caring about your sister. Yeah. In this, like you don't have to. I think it's weird. 
I do think it's weird. But even if you're like, oh, I don't like kids, at least be like, oh, but my sister, this means so much to her. Yeah. And this is her child. Right. And also, that that child is not going to be a child forever. And it's not just some random child that you don't know. It's your sister's, like, literal lineage that you're going to be around for your entire life or as long as you want to be around those dogs for. Like, that's <laughs> so, like... You're you're like viewing a child as not even a human being, like you said. Yeah, like obviously calling truly. them it and being emotional and calling them it is like, Jesus Christ! Like, but this is a person. Yeah. You're like and calling it since the childbirth, as if it was like the Titanic sinking. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Since the event occurred. Yeah. And <laughs> keeping it in your pants and then yeah. And like, okay, so now you hate sex too. You just yeah. sound like you're so boring. <laughs> it's is like your I'm ice back cream my just job. invisible? Do you not even like ice cream either? Like, yeah. Yeah. There's so many levels to this. She's like, I'm not even gonna look at this baby. Like, it's like, what the. F man like I get if you're like oh I don't want to babysit I'm sorry I don't want to change diapers I I'm not comfortable with that stuff but to actively like make this choice of like I'm not gonna acknowledge your kid and that kid's gonna be messed up because it sounds like this this sister shows up a lot and is just what is it once the kid turns 18 you're just like Oh hey, I'm the so and so. Nice no, to meet you. No, she's gonna hate that. That, like... that kid is not gonna want a relationship with with this person either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are your motivations? You don't care about your sister. You don't care about the little baby. You also, don't care the about baby your at least has a diaper on when they shit everywhere. Oh, Dogs, oh. Poop. yours is just oh. falling all over. Your, coming out your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Poop, I was saying that like, dog shits on the grass. Oh, I thought she was spewing bullshit. She is spewing bullshit. That's even so with weird. Or maybe she's eating the dog poop. She may as well. That be. might be why she likes the dogs. Um, yeah. You don't know. Um, some comments here. You're the asshole. Hating children isn't a personality trait. Someone else said, "You're the asshole. We get it. Comment. You're so unique. Just shop <laughs> for your nieces and nephews. Is it that hard? Get a grip." <laughs> Someone else said, "Man, I'm about as child-free as they come, but at least I can acknowledge that children are people." Mm. Yeah, th wow. there. This is next level weird. I've never judged someone for saying they don't like kids and or wanting kids or even being like, I, I, if I have the choice, I'm not going to be around kids. I'm like, fine. But this is weird. Like, I think it's. I do think it's a little weird when anybody hates something or doesn't like. I don't like cats. I don't like dogs. I don't like kids. I don't like. Like, cause it's like, well, you're okay, you're generalizing. And I wanna, sometimes I wanna understand like, okay, so when you picture this thing that you're saying you don't like, what are you picturing is happening and what are they doing? What do they look like to you? And like, not every kid or child or, or, or dog or cat is like that. And so it's just like a weird way to limit your own thinking. Right, yeah. and I, I get with like dogs and cats, maybe people feel fear. Like, oh, I'm scared of dogs. I don't like dogs because right. they scare me. But with with kids, and I get- And being like I, repulsed by and complete, just visceral disliking, because fear mm -hmm. is a different Well, thing. and for her though, it's this complete apathy. Mm -hmm. And that's almost weirder for me. It's like, it's different if she's like, oh, I have this weird phobia or I have this whatever. Um, or like I said, if like kids are loud and, and whatever, and that, that's a lot for me. But her just like complete dismissal mm -hmm. yeah. is, this is something different to me. And it's just it's strange. Just how I thought you were supposed to be cool when I was 12, which is like, I don't like anything that you like. <laughs> I just, I still, the funniest it's thing like, to me is her, um, the funniest thing is like, everyone knows that since I was 10, I dislike children. It's like. Yeah. Yeah, like what? I'm just like, what happened to you? <laughs> yeah, but then follows it up with, and everyone knows about my adoration of puppies, or like whatever she's. It was the yeah, weirdest. Yeah, like, everyone knows about these things about me. She Every year at summer weird. camp, yeah. like I'm Haley. I hate babies, but love puppies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, and I will say, like, listen, I I like kids, but I don't want a random wet Cheeto hand getting put in my face mm -hmm. every now and again. Like I ha I can understand that, but like totally. to completely not acknowledge this, it's like. Because if it's just like some random kid you don't know, you don't have to look any which way or act any which way, but it's your family. It's an extension of your right. sister. Mm -hmm. If you love your sister, and your sister is raising this child to like, you know, like, I don't know. Also, I don't know. she's not communicating that she doesn't understand like the, uh, the social necessity for her to be involved in its life. She actually is like, describing disdain for it. It's mm -hmm. not like she doesn't like that she's now responsible for something or has to pitch in mm -hmm. or that she's expected right. to show up. No, she actually doesn't like it, like them, the, mm -hmm. the baby. Like right. the, mm -hmm. That's so weird. No, her slipping up and writing it in this is like extremely so telling. Mm -hmm. And anyone who can dehumanize 
any other person to that level, I just, I don't like you. Like, I, yeah. think, there's, I think there's a lot that you need to work on. Yeah. If you're gonna refer to any human being as it, Nah, man. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's crazy. Especially one you're supposed to care about. Like, Especially your family member. Like, like, come on, a baby, a baby who's done nothing to you. Yeah, like she admits, there's this baby has never done anything. Like, no, be different. It's like this baby tried to murder me. <laughs> yeah, this it baby had a gun soup. and tried to shoot. Me. So, uh, all right, I got pea soup, but it was poo. Next story. Am I the asshole for leaving a family gathering due to my parents always over complimenting my brother? Oh, this one, I believe. This is, this, is, this is some real sibling drama. All right, my brother has had a lot of time for hobbies in recent years. Something he spent a lot of time on is cooking. Now he is a really good cook. Uh, he and his husband have a decent sized house, so a lot of our routine family dinners are held at their place. My brother volunteers to cook most of the time. When he does, without fail, as soon as our parents come through the door, or we do, it's always, smells re really good in here, doesn't it? Damn, you were making me hungry from the street. <laughs> or things along those lines, and they keep saying such, <laughs> yeah. such things throughout our time there. At first I didn't think one way or another about it, but we're going on well over two years of this happening. They never give compliments if I or our other siblings have them over. They didn't say anything about the murals my brother and his wife painted on their walls, very big and hard to miss, until they pointed right at them and asked about it, and all our parents said uh, was, oh, that's nice. Our sister is always making bath bombs and candles for her home business, so her place always smells nice too, and they don't say anything about that or encourage her. <laughs> they just don't give any compliments or acknowledge anything about us, our hobbies, or our homes, but they go overboard with our brother. It's not like they neglected him as a kid and it's some attempt to make up for it. They gave us all pretty uh, equal attention and support growing up. This last time having dinner at my brother's house, I was telling my family about how excited I was for my fiance to be starting his dream job. My siblings were happy for him, but our parents didn't say anything and went right back to singing their praises of the second coming of culinary Jesus <laughs> and how he should start a food truck. I was pretty done at that and st instead of being there in an irritated mood, I waited a few minutes and acted like I had gotten a text from a friend and had to go. Said my byes and love yous and left. A little while later, my mom called and asked what was wrong because my family had noticed my phone screen was dark when I pulled it out, so they didn't buy the text <laughs> story. I told her I just didn't have it in me to sit through another dinner where they forget they have three other, other children. Oh. With things going on in their lives they'd like some acknowledgement for. I've been at odds a bit with my parents and them telling me I'm being immature. My siblings found out why we're currently fighting and our brother and his wife are in agreement with me and said they've been getting tired of it too. I've apologized to my brother, but not my parents. So am I the asshole? Uh, interesting. So the issue isn't that they're complimenting one, it's the lack thereof yeah. of any other acknowledgement. And it um, also seems like they get compliments over very small things and large events don't get compliments still. So it's not just the yeah. lack mm -hmm. of compliments, but also it's like, why would you compliment the peas and not the fact that my, right. I'm about peas today. <laughs> I will say at the beginning, I was like, oh, come on. Like parents' whole personality is like, smells good, I almost <laughs> floated into the kitchen. Like, <laughs> yeah. but it, it is, it's the lack of acknowledging the other siblings in any way. And like, it sounds like those siblings are actually making conscious efforts to try and get that same appreciation and acknowledgement. And that's that's rough. I mean, coming from a lot of siblings who all have different um, life situations, I sometimes feel a weird amount of guilt for like the success that I have. It's no different from other siblings' success in my family, but like I and I think it's I have a weird thing with compliments too, where like if I'm getting compliments in any scenario, I feel uncomfortable because I don't want anybody to feel uh, like jealous or I just don't. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, you don't want others to feel less than because you're getting right. I, I, I and get, that's I, not I, the attention. case, probably. But like, uh, probably a lot of siblings deal with just the like, you know, oh, comparing. We're, like comparing. Like, yeah, is like that we level... shouldn't be compared. Like... I think that's something that I I never dealt with with my brothers, and that's what I mean with sibling rivalry because they're so much older than me that I never compared myself in that regards mm -hmm. of like a competition. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't sound like they're trying to compete with their brother as much as they're right. just like, oh, our just parents like, hey, are me not. Too. They're mad at the parents, they're not yeah. mad at the brother. Um, which, yeah. is, which is good, and I'm glad they're not blaming on the, on the brother. Yeah. S something I, I did wonder, and they, he uh, 
do, they do acknowledge it here in an edit. I was curious because they they acknowledge like that their brother and his husband, and I was like, maybe this is the parents. They're uncomfortable, like mm -hmm. or like they Trying they're overcompensate, overcompensate or mm -hmm. like something, or they don't know what how to talk. So with, oh, Michael, great job! Oh, this on food those. is so good. Mm -hmm. um, and so they wrote uh, to answer the topic that keeps coming up. My brother has been out for 16 years. This isn't a response to him just coming out. They have always been very very supportive of him, but I can understand people assuming that first. Mm -hmm. So this that's mm -hmm. old news for for the parents. It's 16 years ago. Um, I think I also would get tired of just every dinner at this place for two years of just the entire night, the conversation is just, this food is just so good. Yeah. <laughs> Love this food. Mm -hmm. Wow. This food? I'd be like, can we talk about <laughs> anything else? Yeah. yeah. But it would also, it would break my heart if I were the brother the, the, who was cooking and found out that all these siblings are feeling hurt because I'm being, I'm the one being complimented and, and acknowledged so much. Like that would, it, it's, it breaks my heart, like the idea mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. Um, I, I'm also curious, they, they compliment his cooking, but do they compliment, it, it, does he get an, uh, uh, is there an imbalance of him getting compliments in every other regard too, or is it just his cooking? I mean, they... I feel like a lot of things, especially when it comes with siblings and parents, it's also like, it's also like internal perceptions. So like even if the rest of his life in every measurable way is somehow worse or like you should, be getting more praise, the fact that he's able to cook and it's delicious, that's enough for the mm. parents to be proud of them. Mm. So yeah. like it's still, you, you know, like a parent to their child, you could be proud of them for a million reasons, but just the fact that they are and communicate it is enough. So it's, I think the parents obviously need to be told what they're doing wrong yeah. and that they need to do better, but also it's, they might not know, and like as the child, like he's obviously wants the praise, but. I, I don't think the parents are like, it seems like they're oblivious. So, because yeah. this this OP tried to leave the party just to remove mm -hmm. himself with the situation, which I think, from the situation, which I think is very mature, and not trying to make it about the problem. Then the OP was called out on it, and that, and then the parents didn't even like acknowledge why or, I'm so sorry you feel that way because that's what matters. Mm -hmm. And yeah, to be called immature is so unfair. And I hope that the parents, the parents should look look inward and try to understand why it's like that. It's like, oh, if they're foodies, like cool. But now be conscious that your yeah. siblings, that your other children want your attention. Like, um, we have some comments here. Honestly, you wouldn't be the asshole for leaving a family gathering like that. Good on you for suppressing your emotions. I probably would have gotten uh, rather heated. People shouldn't always expect praise, but you should expect your other kids to get irritated when you only give one of them any praise, not the asshole. Someone else said, not the asshole. They asked, you told them. You didn't make a scene, you didn't make a fuss, but them now calling you immature for an answer to a question they asked, seems they don't like that y'all have caught on. Uh, mm. Yeah, that, that, that does suck, because as a parent, if I found out one of my children was like, hey, I'm yeah. feeling unacknowledged, I'd be like, oh shit, man, like, yeah, like, of course, you know, mm -hmm. it, that, that probably hurt worse than the initial thing of it all. Um, did they say if that's if this is like a common occurrence in their life, or is it like a recent? They said it's like every time the family gets together. Like they couldn't, but like when they were younger, is it also similar? Oh, yeah. Tommy, you got uh, a I think B. They said, Thank they you. said growing up that it was all pretty equitable. Yeah. But that just it just seems like in the recent years. Yeah. So there's another edit here. Uh, info: Was this brother always the golden child, or did this start as a campaign to support his coming out? No, they were pretty good about giving us all equal attention and avoid showing favoritism. My brother has been out for a very long time and they were supportive from the start. This only started in the last few years after he'd been married for a good while. Mm. So this is just a recent occurrence. Um, I, I just think the parents might be oblivious, but I don't like that they responded that way. I don't think yeah. that's the right way to respond. Yeah. Um, anyways. That's I weird. That's weird. Yeah, the way I would have tried, if I if I was in the, the kid scenario, the ones that weren't feeling acknowledged, I probably would have tried to make a joke about it. Like make like some kind of like, well, you know, since he's the favorite and whatever, but maybe that probably wouldn't have been helpful either. I don't know if the parents would catch on. They just seem oblivious. Do you mind me asking, just because you have so many siblings, mm -hmm. like with me and my siblings, I mean, obviously there's a large enough age gap too where it never felt like there was ever any competition, but not even competition, but from, like we never felt favorit favoritism and not that you have mm -hmm. to share, but does, with so many people, does it feel like there's teams sometimes? Oh my gosh, when there's lots of siblings, it feels like you're in high school your whole life. Mm -hmm. Like it is constant. <laughs> it's like, it's like 
people talk and, and break off and people have fights and stuff. So it, it can almost feel like clicky, not always in a bad way. Like everyone's got their siblings that they kind of like stick with, mm -hmm. you know, two peas in a pod. Um, but yeah, I think this makes me, this makes me think about, cause whenever I go and visit my dad, they ask me about Smosh and like they, they want to know about Smosh. And then I, and I start getting very self-conscious because it, it's like the only thing that's being talked about and that's not what all I want to talk about. Right. I work 12 hour days. I want to go and talk about hot dogs or something, yeah. you know? <laughs> sure. I have that good hot dog combo. Um, and, and, and I do worry because like, it's a lot of, like I love my dad and I love that he loves watching my content and he's probably, he might be watching this, um, but like, you know, it, I, I understand that Smosh is like a very specific job. Like, he literally gets to see what I do all the time. And yeah, he's like a fan cool of all of way. you guys. Mm -hmm. And like, so um, yeah. I feel like I, my job and is like kind of like this brother's cooking, but I don't think, I don't know. My siblings have never had like an issue. So I don't know, my, yeah. my siblings are all pretty I feel chill. That's, my brother's luckily, and my brother's both very successful, but I, the similar thing where like, you know, I come to visit family and they're like, ah, Mr. Hollywood over <laughs> here. And uh, <laughs> I sincerely, that has been said to my face. Um, and I just, I after no a, a while, I'm like, yeah. But luckily both my brothers just do not care. Like they're both such, they're so comfortable and confident in themselves that it was never yeah. a, a thing. Um, and when we all hang out, just the three of us, it, we're, we don't really talk about work. Like mm -hmm. we're just like, yeah, just whatever. Um, we're, just, I, we're just three guys. Yeah. Hey. I'm glad that it doesn't sound like the siblings have any weirdness between them because it's like, I, I, I feel like competition should be thrown out the window sometimes because it's like, oh, you're doing your Mr. Hollywood while well, I've seen you shit yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> you're not so great, I don't think. They've all seen me dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> wow! They have. They I've seen have. You die. All right, moving on. And we'll on. see it again. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see it again. Just wait. Oh. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Okay. Moving on. Am I the asshole for telling my sister not to eat in her car because it grosses me out? What? <laughs> All right. This is a 15-year-old girl. Uh, I'm 15, learning how to drive uh, in my sister, who's 19, uh, in her car. My sister and I have very different standards of cleanliness. Her room is always messy. She has no problem re-wearing clothes. She sleeps with our dog. Uh, she doesn't wash her face, and she only washes her hair like once or twice a week. I knew she eats in her car because her booster seat thing had sesame seeds in the holes, and I sometimes her see fast booster food. Seats? And I sometimes <laughs> see fast food wrappers is this in the car. Olivia? Yeah. <laughs> but I can just take off the booster thing and ignore it. I got home the other day and she was eating in her car and there was food everywhere. It was disgusting. When she came inside, I told her to stop eating in her car because it grosses me out. She said, it's not my car, so not my choice, but I told her I drive it almost every day. She told me she has 25 minutes to eat and get to work after class and her work is 15 minutes away from her school, so she's gonna eat wherever she wants and if I have a problem with that, I can buy my own car. I told her I can't work if I can't drive and she said that's not her problem. Ooh. She hasn't been letting me drive her car because Apparently it's disgusting, and she's been kind of bitchy to me, so I wanted to know <laughs> if I was the asshole for telling her not to eat in her car. That's so funny. That's incredible. That's, that, yeah, that's, that I, that story, insane. that's real. That's yeah. really funny. You know, this, this, I see it's on Am I the Asshole, and it got reposted on Am I the Devil, but honestly, Am I, a, that got but, put on Am I the Devil? Yeah, no, I don't yeah, think that I feel belongs. Like Am I the Devil has had like lower standards. No, lower that does not belong on Am I the Devil. Lately. That is, that is just, that is just, two teenagers who are yeah. related to each other interacting. Those that's two sisters. That's an episode of Malcolm in the Middle. Like yeah. that's that's like, that's yeah. just yeah. some real shit. I understand her being frustrated because she needs to get to work, but it's if it's literally like legally not her car, like. No, I, yeah. I, but I, I and, and under no other circumstances with friends or any other person would you ever Say that, I, but I, I believe siblings would say, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, dude, stop eating in your car, it's gross. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. so but also, we haven't seen that, look, my car used to be very, very gross and I accept it, but even in the days, <laughs> it was, it was trash. Like I can't imagine she's eating and it's like whole pickles. No, 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 like, no, no, no. Like, really? I believe. She's like, oh god. Oh, a night, <laughs> uh, dude, god. a nineteen-year-old eating in their car—it's probably a nightmare. But like, you want it's, the food. It's Armageddon. Like, yeah. 
No, it's, I just don't know why, like, I don't know. When I was a teenager, anytime I got into any car, like, be it my brothers and my friends, it was a nightmare. Like, oh, cars yeah. are awful. Yeah. And, <laughs> but you just kind of are like, whatever. I, I don't, it wasn't until I was, like, 25 that I stepped into a car uh, of one of my peers or, or anyone that, where the car didn't smell like McDonald's. Yeah. Cars just smell like McDonald's when you're a teenager. Yeah, McDonald's, it's like a perma smell. Like, they, I, I, conspiracy, it's for advertising. Just kidding, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Look, man. Is. Yeah, when you're a teenager and you get your first car, and, and then when you're even when you're like in college and you have a car, like mm -hmm. it's gonna be messed up. Yeah, it's just gonna be messed up. Also, who designed a car with, like the with the fry slot? You know what I'm talking about? There's a perfect crack for the fries. Fry slot. Why do we need the fry slot? You could just connect true. the piece. I don't need connect the piece. It's true. Guys, get rid of the fry slot. You lose a fry and it's gonna be there forever. It's gone forever. forever. And it's so hard, and you touch it, and it's still oily. And how? It's off. Did Did any of your siblings teach you how to drive, or did you teach any of your Did you teach any of your siblings how to drive? No, my dad taught me. Okay. And, and you? And your... Yeah, similar though. I did drive my brother's car. That was the first car I drove. It was a wonderful car. Uh, 2007 BMW 328i. Whoa. It was incredible. Two door coupe. Very cool. I didn't pay a dollar for it. I got to drive it. He put a big sub in the back of it. He it was his a baby. Subwoofer, a subwoofer, not a sub sandwich. Okay. Not, well, there might have been one as well. And he was in <laughs> Seattle, a completely different state, enjoying his life. And I took that car. It drove me to school. It drove me to work. And I totaled it. Aww. I totaled that car, and that was <laughs> the worst feeling in my entire life. Yeah. Because. You thank God we were alive and safe, but but did you eat in it all the time? Yeah. <laughs> How all dare you? Too. I I had siblings who shared cars in those first few years of driving, and that's so tough. That's it's, that's got to be it's a hard. Uh, I never shared cars with my brother because they were so much older than me. Mm. So, but I do remember my brother's car. He had this old ass Honda. And uh, this was forever ago, so I remember he had like the row of CDs on the like oh, mirror, and, like the, he, it, the music was like just insane. <laughs> like I knew, like I would get in the car and just be, like, <laughs> it was like that. It was like that. Um, anyways, we have uh, comments here. You're the asshole. It's her car. Why can't she eat in it? Because it grosses you out. That's fine. Don't use her car then. What about mom or dad's car? Who is driving with you anyway? In Illinois, your 19-year-old sister is not a legal instructor. Uh, wow, uh, people Damn. catch on. Uh, OP said, mom and dad don't want me to drive their cars. My sister drives with me. Um, uh, someone said, you're the asshole. It's her car, and like she explained, she's working in school, and it sounds like she has a small child. She probably isn't exaggerating no, when she just says- because the driver is small. Yeah, that's it. They... <laughs> Olivia, <laughs> this is Olivia. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, the booster seat thing. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it sounds like she has a small child. She probably isn't exaggerating when she says she gets 25 minutes to eat. OP responded, she doesn't have a kid. She has a booster seat thing in the front seat because she's like 4'10. <laughs> Got a booster seat and two yellow pages. <laughs> this person is just living their life. Like they got their booster seat, they got their sesame seeds, and they just they're That's cruising. Incredible. I love like <laughs> I love the disrespect at this age. Yeah. I love it uh, because she's like four ten. Like she just she yeah. just like. She hates her sister in a way that I know is not permanent, and that's yeah. why it's funny to me. Yeah. That I'm like, she's like, right now, she just friggin' hates her. She's <laughs> disgusting. She's my stupid sister. She's got Honey Nut Cheerios all in her <laughs> booster seat. Did you ever have a, like a sibling phase where like your oldest sibling thought you were just disgusting? Oh, I'm sure all the time I was the youngest, but me and my middle brother, there was like a three-year pocket where we hated each other. Aww. Really? Oh, yeah, I would say, because... You know, we, would, we wouldn't be mean to each Like, we never hurt each other, but you know, you're brothers, so there's yeah. things, you know. Yeah. I would say, I hate you, I wish you were dead, you know, things like that. <laughs> yeah, because he would like, you know, bully me a little and like, you know, push me, because I'm like six and I don't Feelings. get it. I want to be your friend and you, you called me the B word. And I'm like, why did you call me the B word? <laughs> Butthole. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, it's so funny. All right, next story. Am I the asshole for pulling out of planning my sister's wedding, causing her to lose her venue? <laughs> oh no! Ooh. Ooh, brother! Okay. Literally. <laughs> As a wedding planner who has been in the industry for many years now, uh, this is a 31-year-old man, 
My party trick amongst close friends and family is being able to guess how long my clients' marriages will last with pretty alarming accuracy. If you ask anyone in the industry, there are specific indicators while working with a couple that allow us to be able to gauge compatibility. I can usually get down to predicting around a six month window of when photos of each other will disappear from socials. This is not me taking joy in the crashing and burning of relationships. Working in this career field can actually leave you feeling jaded about relationships in general, which is why I'm reluctant to work for friends and family. The specific stress wedding planning puts on some people, couples, can bring out the worst in them that you don't see in everyday life. My sister is getting married early next year and practically begged me to plan for her despite my, ch my stance on clients I know personally. Mm -hmm. I finally gave in and we began the process back in March. Last week, while we were meeting and finalizing a few things, she asked me about the party trick I mentioned. She said since I had been working with her and her fiance for months now, I could give my prediction as to how long they were going to last. Don't. I laughed and tried to move on. I thought she was joking, but she continued to press the issue. After her continually bothering me about this for at least 15 minutes when I'm trying to move on, I do have work outside of my specific appointment with her that I needed to get to. I finally told her I thought they would last forever. She claimed she didn't believe me and wanted my real number. So I shrugged and told her the truth. A year, a year and a half. She was livid. I felt incredibly uncomfortable with the whole ordeal, especially with how little she respected my boundaries in what is supposed to be a professional setting, and just tried to usher her out of my office. Instead, she began ranting about my own marriage and said she gives us until the end of the year before we break oh. up, and accused me of being a homewrecker. She finally left, and I emailed her saying I would no longer be involved in planning. I gave her the contact information for all of the vendors we were working with, but told her the venue would no longer be available as they only book to people they have existing relationships with, and my involvement was necessary. I have had to break up with clients before, but this felt particularly rough. She has now told our parents that I am purposefully sabotaging her, her wedding and that I was unforgivably rude to her when she just asked a playful question. I feel, I feel very silly for letting a person disrespect my boundaries over and over again, something I typically wouldn't tolerate, but now I'm wondering if I'm in the wrong. Uh, oh my God. Uh, yeah, we need an update in a year and a half. Yeah. Or probably longer, because I don't know when this wedding's Out happening. Out of spite, they're together for Bro. 17 months. Um, a year and a half, 19 months. I, dude, look, anytime someone pushes and pushes for information, and the and you were like, I want the honest answer, give me the honest answer, and they give you the honest answer, you have to just take that then. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> <laughs> this, this OP avoided this at every measure. Like first was like, I don't know if I can help you with your wedding. It's tough with personal relationships. Okay, fine. Avoiding, literally, bride was looking for a f reason. This bride <laughs> is insecure. So, okay, I'm, I'm going in hot, is yeah, this okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll pull it back a gear. This bride needed to know so bad and wouldn't accept forever. You wanted to be upset. You mm -hmm. wanted to be upset. Like if you're, if this, if you're, just trust your sister, she, okay? She, she's upset because I think she knows. She knows, it's confirmation. exactly. Yeah. And then try to be like, I bet you right now. Literally, yeah, like, like, literally come on. Know you. Yeah, no, you. You're just gonna end of the year. You home wrecker. <laughs> like what happened? What? No, d just tell me for real, come on. Just give it to me for real, come I mean, on. Honestly, I just, I think uh, maybe your jeans, uh, maybe one is cuffed and extra cuffed on the other. What the <laughs> f <laughs> We were doing the hypothetical about the marriages, Noah! <laughs> Not about my jeans! <laughs> no, it's oh fine, it's God. funny. Anyways, um... <laughs> I, I just, I just um, said No, I, I... That's insane. Uh, so, uh, there's not a verdict that I see here, but someone commented, Everyone sucks here. Mm -hmm. I think you should stop playing this party trick with anyone. Even if you're accurate, it's not a nice thing to say about people. You could have avoided this whole scenario if you never played mental games with people's lives. Now, of course your sister is an asshole for pushing and pushing, but you should never have told her the truth. Uh, I agree, but also my reaction to that is when you work in any profession, I feel like you probably just get like jaded and like I'm sure that like nurses and doctors have dark humor about stuff. Yeah. It's like you're just in it all the time. Like you're just you, you just to. you just get so used to that world. I do get, but I also I do also agree to yeah. a degree. Like yeah, I mean it is disrespectful. It is a weird thing to be. Yeah. Only I would 
only my advice to him would be like, only make those jokes with like other people in your industry yeah. who are right. also witnessing the same shit. Yeah. Don't go around, your sister knew about yeah. this party trick. Well, yeah. And now it is weird that she's getting married if yeah. she knows you yeah. have that party trick. I mean, trick. it doesn't sound like OP is going around telling people this thing. It sounds like it's just something amongst the planners in the the wedding, the, like in the wedding, wedding industry. Um, but like, I, if I were OP, I would have lied, but better. Like, instead of saying, ah, oh, forever, I would be like, oh, it's it doesn't work with personal relationships because it's a different gauge completely. That's true. I'd be like, oh, I'm biased. Be accurate. I'm yeah. so biased. I know your partner too well. I know you guys from before we were planning this. Yeah. yeah. I can't. It, it doesn't work that um, way, yeah. I was gonna say the verdict actually was not the asshole. Not the, the asshole. The verdict The verdict was he didn't do anything. Yeah, I don't wrong, think they're an asshole, but they definitely only did this because it was their sister. Like, obviously you would never, even if someone knew that you could do, you'd never do that to a random client. Like, yeah. And obviously this is me just going for it, but. You low key, you like, like when she asked the second time, like a piece of you were like, okay, like, yeah. okay, Sandra. Uh, there, there's not enough info on like their relationship yeah. right. as a whole. But it's like only you would do that to your sibling where it's, you're like, yeah, okay. No, and well, yeah, and the sister only had the audacity to, not the audacity, but like the, mm -hmm. the boldness to ask. Keep the, pushing the, the, for like, it. Because, because they're siblings. And with siblings, it's inevitable that people in within the family have opinions on each other's relationships. Like. Mm -hmm. It is like we people should still have boundaries, but in families, like opinions really be flowing. I, you know? I, I, I would almost, you know, what almost would have been a better thing for him to say is be like, well, I'm biased and I can't because I don't like your husband. Yeah. Or I don't like your fiance. Because that's that also, I'm curious what he thinks of her fiance. Yeah, or like, yeah, like why a year and a half? You yeah, know? yeah, exactly. That's, yeah, that's true too. I don't Instead think of storming he's... off and being like, no, you're, you should be like, whoa, like what What's is. What's going on? Because I am having these insecurities. Or actually, I think he's a really great guy. Like, what are you seeing? Yeah. You know, I'm uncomfortable. You were going to plan our wedding. You didn't like him the whole time. Like, there's other. That's wild. That's yeah, just. It sounds a little um, bit insecurity. Mm -hmm. All right, next story. Am I the asshole for not wanting to dye and cut my hair to keep up with the hateful and spiteful traditions of my older siblings? All right. Hello, this is quite the story, so I'll start from the beginning. My mother has six kids. Annabelle, who's a 22-woman. Uh, Seth, 20-year-old uh, guy. Lily, 19-year-old girl. Melanie and Stephanie, 17-year-old uh, girl twins. And me, who's a 16-year-old girl. Uh, my mother has never been a real parent to us. She popped out baby after baby, forcing my older siblings to take care of the next one. People even assumed that Annabelle was my mother for a time because she'd always been, been uh, seen grocery shopping. Buying our uniforms and bringing us places, my mother was busy enjoying her life. Our mother has cared about one and only one thing about us, our hair. She loves our beautiful blonde hair. She'd always skimp out of grocery money, but always brought us to the hair salons every time we'd go to any sort of event. She'd spend a pretty penny on our hair, and she'd take better care of our hair than our health. Annabelle started the tradition when she turned 16. To spite our mother, she dyed her hair pink and cut it all into a short bob. My mother was absolutely horrified. One after the other, on every 16th birthday, my siblings dyed and cut their blonde, beautiful hair to spite our mother. I'm the only one left with my long, blonde hair. It's down to my legs and my mother adores it. She always favored my hair the most because it was the lightest blonde and it's just like a doll's hair. She spent hours brushing it when I was a little girl, so I wasn't very surprised when all my siblings came to me a day after my birthday, eager to bring me to a salon and cut all my hair off and dye it. I told them I loved my long hair and I loved the color. They all got mad and told me that I needed to cut and dye it, or at the very least, dye it, since my mother loved it and they wanted to see her cry. She always <laughs> cried when they cut their hair. I told them that I hated mom. She was horrible and toxic, but it's my hair and I love it. None of them are speaking to me. I understand their hateful nature and why they want me to cut it. Maybe I just should, but I don't want, I don't know. Reddit, am I the asshole? Aw. Yeah. <laughs> That's my honest reaction to that is like, aw, like, I, I, I understand this whole situation, but I, I'm on her side. You, you, it's her, her she hair. She likes what she likes. She's yeah, her hair. It's her hair. It's her body. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, bodily autonomy is yeah. the first of all. Absolutely. You know. I love the the relationship that the sisters have. Mm -hmm. It's sad that they want to see their mother cry, um, but get a wig, scare your mom for a day. See, I, I <laughs> that's what they wanted. I get her perspective. I do think it is, and maybe this is the Jew talking, I do think that she should just join the coven. Like, it should happen. <laughs> Mark yourself with your tribe and let it be done. <laughs> I, I think, I, this is the, my thought though, and I get she's 16, she has 17 year old twin sisters. You know, 
cool, you can, you can retaliate against your mom by cutting and dyeing your hair. The real retaliation is when they're all 18 and they never talk to their mom again. Yeah. That's the real yeah, yeah. thing that's gonna happen. The like retaliation, that's, yeah. And that's not even something that they would have to do willingly. That's just what seems like it's gonna happen. You know, yeah. that's what happens to shitty parents. They don't end up having relationships with their kids and once they're mm -hmm. adults. Like that's, that's the inevitable consequence. So she's acknowledged, she's like, I hate mom too. Like, yeah. I'm not on her side. Yeah. This is just my hair and my body and I just don't want to do yeah. that. Yeah. Let me live my life while also acknowledging that we all don't like this person. And is in two years, I'm probably going to move on. Is OP the youngest? Yes. Okay, wow. So she just turned 16 and the tradition is on their 16th birthday they do this, which I think is like, oh, that's a cool thing that I all the siblings really have. Fun, yeah. But I also fully respect her choice. Yeah. And for them to be like not talking to her because of it, I'm like, come on. like. Yeah, and it, it like I understand like taking back your hair and taking ownership of your hair after years of like not having control over it. I love that for those sisters. Um, it's the mean spiritedness of like wanting to see their mom cry. Like I understand I, this mom could have been a horrible person, but like I, I can't help but see like unkindness in these siblings for wanting to see her cry. And but like, it just sounds like this mom has really been awful and neglectful yeah, to them all. Absolutely. But it's like let like at least respect your sister, you know? Sure. Like, yeah, like their mom's not winning. Her, her her your mom's probably bummed every day that all of her daughters aren't her American girl dolls. Like I get the tradition of like, and I respect that of like, hey, our mom, she doesn't get to be this decider for us. She doesn't get to have control over us. And I respect that aspect of all this. And mm -hmm. like we're taking it on for ourselves. But that has to be for your own self. And mm -hmm. they're kind of, they're becoming the mom in this situation of controlling her in the opposite direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, that's what mom's been doing to her this whole time, is controlling yeah. her and making her live a certain way and be a certain way and be neglectful. Now they're doing it to her. It's like, mm -hmm. no, the whole point is that you get to be your own person and, mm -hmm. and this shitty person doesn't get to tell you what to do. Yeah. Or, or I guess neglectful in this case, but yeah. like. Yeah. There's also Maybe wanting, there's to be, wanting to be unique. But like with six siblings, how many colors are there? Okay, pink, purple, blue, orange, green. What's next? Yellow? Blonde? You gotta look at the Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 blonde. Literally, like there's no cool yeah. colors left. I think, they, I think they all, all might have done pink. I'm not sure. They, yeah. they may not they be, it may pink? not be different I don't colors. I they were all pink, but they all oh, chopped yeah. their hair off and dyed it and not blonde Oh, color. see, I thought they chopped it and all did it pink and like secretly I was like, that's the coolest tradition. Cause who, what family? If I saw those does girls that? walking down the street, I would simply cross the street. Yeah, like, <laughs> like but oh, yeah, I am interrupting their existence yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> they um, get out the car. It's yeah. like you don't know how many yeah. there are. If, if a car pulled up on the sidewalk next to me and five pink-haired bobs came out, I would, I would run. Um, okay, there's some comments. Not the asshole. It's your hair and you like it. If they want to do that to their hair, fine. They can do that. What they can't do is tell you what to do with your hair. Yeah. Uh, someone else said, not the asshole. They are doing the same thing to you as your mom is, determining your value Whoa. and position in the family by your hair. Superficial and ridiculous. Wow. Uh, someone else said, not the asshole, but your siblings are. Lock your door at night when you sleep. Okay, that's Oh my God. But, but I, okay. I, I, have noticed, I have noticed a trend, I, I think, in life and stuff. Um, and I notice that sometimes, yeah, I, I, it's just something I notice that people who hate their parents uh, and just in general, it was something, the, the traits that we don't like about our parents, we end up repeating, but we repeat it in a different way mm -hmm. in almost like trying to resist that. Like, and it's still somehow and it's, parallel. It's like, yeah, like that's why you gotta do that work because all these siblings, they think like, we're never gonna end up like our mom. We're not gonna be like her. And they're doing yeah. the exact same thing, wow. but just in a different way. Mm -hmm. So it's a different shade of the same behavior. <laughs> wow. Uh, all right. Okay. So this comes from a subreddit called Siblings from Hell. Oh, good. So this is a new one. Oh, good. I don't think we've like had this them. one before. All right. My brother is a misogynist and it's infuriating. Uh, oh no. Well, let's give him, let's, let's hear him out. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm, <laughs> just kidding. Let him cook. Look, whether or not we <laughs> okay, want guys, to. Okay, guys, let him cook. <laughs> let him okay, cook. Okay, uh, let, that, let that brother from before cook. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, nobody said let him cook. We never one. said let him cook. Uh, okay. My mom was raised by a misogynistic grandfather, so she has always tried to hammer those same beliefs into her kids. My sister and I think it's dumb and unfair, but my brother doesn't. Since he's the only boy, he gets everything easy. 
He doesn't cook. He refuses to cook. He often walks up to me and my sister and asks us when we're going to cook because he's hungry. Then he gets angry when I get confused because I wasn't hungry and wasn't on planning on cooking anything. Then he throws a fit like a toddler and berates you for how stupid you are for not cooking. He has never washed dishes in his entire life. He didn't start washing his own laundry until he started college, and even then when he's home, he refuses to wash them. He's over for, uh, for summer vacation right now, and he did not wash his laundry for over a month. He started wearing other people's clothes because he has nothing to wear. My mom eventually washed them for him. He gets on to me for being such a woman. The day before yesterday, my sister was being frustrating and created a huge mess in the kitchen. I was complaining about it, mainly mumbling to myself while I was cleaning it. Then my brother told me that I needed to stop being such a woman. When I asked him what that meant, he pointed out that I was complaining about someone who wasn't in the room while I was cleaning. He said I needed to take the two L's because I was being stereotypical. He does this all the time. Like if I wear a dress ever, even a casual sundress, he'll get onto me for being too much like a woman. Bro, I am a woman, literally born female. Why is it a bad thing when I act like a woman? What's the problem? I don't get it. He also makes a lot of jokes about women. He had me watch the 1997 uh, Berserk anime, and I said I didn't like the only girl main character, Casca, because it felt like the author had never interacted with a woman before. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's a, the character. <laughs> God damn. Yeah. Uh, the character seems to have extreme mood swings. In one scene, she was telling a character about how much she hated him and tried to fight him. Then the next minute, she burst into tears, said she was jealous of the man, and then she and the guy had sex. Plus, Casca, I love how this, we're reading about Berserk right now. <laughs> I was not expecting this. Uh, plus, Casca ended up fainting and having a fever because she was on her period, even though that is definitely not how that works. Anyway, I was like, talk about mixed signals. What just happened? My brother just went off like, yeah, like all women. <laughs> and insisted that all women are crazy with a raging bipolar disorder and no sense of control over their emotions. And with the period thing, all he said, to, all he had to say was, so? Like, he just brushed it off because he couldn't have cared less, which I guess is fair. He refuses to cook, refuses to clean, even his own messes, doesn't like it if I act girly, and constantly makes jokes about women being too emotional. It's annoying. Uh, wow. Wow. Berserk catching strays in this one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude, that's funny. Oh my god. Uh, um, oh my god. Uh, it's hard to start talking about this one because we all are just yeah. so deep in this muck of like yeah. just you know what's the strange? worst. I, I, can I, my my take on this is like this is a also a weird type of misogyny at mm -hmm. times when she's like wearing a dress. He's like, you're being such a woman. Well, it's like, incel. It's it's incel misogyny. It's yeah. not just like because he's n again. I don't know this person, but to me it reads incelly because he's not even like a confident, outgoing, like overly machismo. You know, he's got none yeah. of those qualities. He's actually like, he's like hiding in the shadows. Yes, he's a a, a, a prick. And he's, he's reading a small berserk. creature. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a very. But, but I'm think, embarrassed for him. I think because my view on misogyny most of the time would be a guy being upset that a woman's not wearing a dress. If it's like it's like oh women need to wear dresses. Oh yeah. That's the type of that's a type of misogyny. Yeah, he's just a woman And then wear. he's mm -hmm. he's upset that she's doing things that a stereotypical woman would do. But you're yeah. right. That is like a it's it's, it's the well, same men, he wants to control, you know, he wants these things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and well, I mean, I know like sometimes when men are uncomfortable around a woman because they're looking feminine and beautiful, like they say weird shit like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like um, this is really an unfortunate story. My boobs sagged closer to the ground hearing this story. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. What? I am what? deflated. Mm -hmm. I uh. have aged. It removed <laughs> youth my from you. My lashes fell off. <laughs> I, my nails are so short. I'm yeah. losing everything um, I was. Uh, yeah. I, 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 so. They're, they don't give their ages in this, but using some clues here, I'm assuming he's like teenager, maybe early 20s. Well, yeah, because he went to college, he's in yeah. college. Okay, okay, yeah. I, I will say, like, it's, it's sad that it's the mother that was instilling this type of stuff, because it's like, yeah. I, it's just so wild that this still happens, but it so does mm -hmm. everywhere, um, but like, He's gonna he's gonna have a really lonely life. He's gonna have a really it's lonely life. It's unfortunate, but the people 
that this person abuses the most are the people who love them the most. So it's like, it's obviously, as I'm sure, I, I don't know, but most abusive relationships are, like it's just so sad for the victim here because the victim loves their brother, obviously, because they still interact with them, even though they're a horrible person, they still mm -hmm. spend time with them. Like they still, like they matter to them and this person is, is just an asshole. She might feel like she doesn't have much of a choice though still mm -hmm. like, I mean, that's I do think it sounds like inevitably if he keeps this up, he like, like other shitty family members will mm -hmm. end up alone. Yeah. Like he's gonna end up, people like this end up alone eventually. Cause the things he's saying are so absurd that he is definitely on online communities where they yeah. all just bounce off each other and say this shit. Cause you know, this stuff is crazy. Like these, these are crazy sentences that he's he's saying. Mm -hmm. I just, it's it sucks, and it sucks that he has no respect for his siblings. Yeah. yeah, you know what you made me think about, just about the idea that like, yeah, he's asking these people and attempting to force them to like cook and clean and all these basic things that are like taking care of yourself. Like he's attempting to force out of intimidation and abuse someone to take care of him. Like that's such a weird behavior. It's so in weird. In order to get any level of love or attention, like the, your steps to it is like abuse. Like that's just so odd. I've just, I'm just never even nasty. thought that it's, that's it's like. It's parasitic. Uh, we have a quick comment here and then we'll move on. Uh, quite frankly, he sounds like an obnoxious pig, but karma is a bitch and if he keeps this behavior up, no woman with an ounce of self-respect will give him a moment of her time. Uh, I would sincerely be shocked if any woman ever gives him a moment mm -hmm. of time. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, next story. Am I the asshole for feeling hatred towards my siblings for using body soap, parenthesis, liquid, to bathe? Wow. <laughs> uh, wow, what a problem to have. <laughs> what? Um, okay, uh, so, so really quick, we, we reformatted this. Uh, anytime you hear the term liquid soap in this story, that is an edit from us to make it easier to read. OP actually phrased it, body soap, parenthesis, liquid, every single time. That's so odd. That's such a crazy detail, but all right. <laughs> Long story short, I, a 20-year-old woman, am not on speaking terms with both my brother, who's 23, <laughs> and my sister, 38, due to a major conflict that occurred a month prior. We all live together in our parents' house, and I am still the only student in the house, which means they are all working adults. We always use liquid body soap, but lately it has finished, and our mom is yet to buy one from the mall. However, due to work, she couldn't immediately get one. Instead, she told us to use bar soap temporarily that is in storage. We do not like to use the bar soap, as it is not as good as the liquid body soap for bathing. Recently, I noticed the smell that comes after my brother and sister take baths is very similar to the liquid body soap that we usually use, <laughs> yet there isn't any kind of liquid bath soap in the bathroom. I can tell this for sure, as I have a very strong sense of smell. So I am not a pervert, and I can certainly <laughs> tell for sure that they have been secretly keeping a liquid bath soap and using it for themselves selfishly. This is because my bro used to go crazy whenever the liquid body soap uh, finishes, finishes and would lash out at us all, but recently he'd been very quiet and satisfied. I have texted my mom about this as she was busy with work and I have asked her verbally when she would buy liquid bath soap for the household. And I noticed the remorse when she told me that she had no time to buy it, but she'd buy it when she goes shopping. I am fine with that. My problem is with my siblings for using a separate soap selfishly. I also have another brother who's 24 who also used the bar soap and doesn't know about them uh, using a separate liquid soap. So I find their actions to be selfish <laughs> and petty. They also talk to the others like my brother and mom, except me, friendly. So I, I find this behavior as not only being selfish but also a betrayal towards other family members. What a betrayal. So I am harboring, oh. so I am harboring more hatred towards them and their carefree attitude. They could have uh, also gone to buy the soap from the mall as they are already earning money or even could have asked my mom for money if they needed it. But no, they decided to buy and keep it for themselves to use selfishly. Am I the asshole for overthinking this? I feel it is so unfair, yet I also feel that I am making a small thing big, AKA gaslighting myself into thinking uh, it's not a big thing. Uh, I need <laughs> answers. Oh God. All um, I'm saying is I counted the macaroni in your bowl when we made mac and cheese and you got 724. <laughs> and I only have 698 and I just think that's super unfair. I am betraying the whole family. This is a betrayal. I, I, at a certain point, I in my head, I was reading this, the voice in my head was Dwight Schrute. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. This is a betrayal. <laughs> this is so real though. Like, 
Well, okay, so it's uh, it's very interesting that this this soap culture that this family has developed. <laughs> yes. Generational soap and bathing culture. They bathe. They only bathe and they use soap, comma liquid. Um, mm -hmm. They all share the same soap. But it's so real, like when it's a big family in a house and there's a supply shortage, you harbor your own supply and you hide it and there are alliances formed. <laughs> yes! You do have, yeah, I got some in the secret cabinet. You can use it. Like that is for wow. sure real. And it's so funny, like family culture for this stuff where it's like, this is an entire society with under one roof and war is happening over <laughs> soap, comma, liquid. So your suggestion <laughs> is that in order to fight against the cabal of the liquid soap, <laughs> they need to form like a, like a hostess sweets <laughs> nation and trade like snacks from the pantry for the soap. Yeah, trade she incentives. Needs to, she needs to talk to her 24 year old brother and she needs to be, needs to be like, look, come, come check out. I got it in the trunk of the car. Opens it up, just one bottle of Head and Shoulders. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like yeah. don't tell anyone about this. Use this one for your shoulders. <laughs> oh my God. So this is for your head and your shoulders. Yeah, <laughs> this is just really though. What I would do is I would then go and I'd take all the toilet paper in the house. You know, like Ooh. if you actually want to play games instead of just sitting down and being like, I am betrayed because you're clean and you smell like flowers. Like a seed. Play the game. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I also like. I don't think bar soap is like worse than liquid soap. No, it's pretty convenient. It's completely there's fine. There's some that like feel different. You feel like a weird squeakiness after, but there's other really good. Bar I feel soap. like this would yeah. be a revelation to her though, because I don't think she knows that she is. I don't know if she knows what it does. <laughs> <laughs> I think if someone was like, was like, she'd be like, whoa. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. She's you like, get the bar wet first. I thought I. <laughs> I don't understand, I never understood. <laughs> I only know how to use liquids. She's in an empty bathtub, no water. And yeah. she's like. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> what? what? Oh. Oh, oh. Um. Yeah, look, this, is, this is the beginning of a society, like Lord of the Flies situation. I yeah. almost wonder if this one's fake, but this, cause this no, one's insane. This is real. Yeah, okay, so there's some comments. Yeah. Uh, you're the asshole. Why is a group of grown adults waiting for their mother to buy soap for them? Rather than whine about your siblings, maybe have some secret soap stash? Go buy soap. Yeah. Someone else said, a major conflict? Good freaking grief. Tell me you've had a sheltered life without telling me you've had a sheltered life. I'm not going to say much here because I'm sure this board is going to eviscerate you, but yeah, you're the asshole. Um, yeah, so I, 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 this is a straight, this is why I think it's fake or there's like a lot more to this story. She's yeah. 20, her brother's 23, and her sister's 38. This is like a very interesting story. Yeah, I will yeah. say it is a lot more common for people in their 30s to be living at home. Yeah, I mean, in a lot of cultures, and I also just think it's common today, like a lot of people live with their parents and live in their parents' house till in their 30s and, mm -hmm. and even 40s and stuff. And that's, that is, I don't question that for a second. I, I might just be in my, from my life and who I am, I might be oblivious to just a lot of things here. Like yeah, maybe yeah. people in the comments will be like, actually what's probably going on here is this and this mm -hmm. and this. Yeah. And that explains Cause like a lot. What, what I see is like definitely like interesting mom fairy energy where it's like expected that mom has to get the soap. Mm -hmm. um, like that kind of makes me laugh because it's like, yeah, they are all adults. Like regardless of where they're living, they can buy soap. <laughs> yeah, you know where soap comes from. Um, but like <laughs> it is possible like with the whole mall thing and stuff, it sounds like it could be a very small town where like shopping centers aren't close by, gas stations might might not have like an it's endless possible. supply of convenience items. So mm -hmm. the mall is where all these people who live in this town yeah. probably have to go for their necessities. It's possible. Um, but yeah, it is very strange that this 20 year old, they're the only person in school. So maybe they don't have a job and can't buy soap, but mm -hmm. you could form an alliance. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's, there needs to be an alliance, yeah. And yeah. also your siblings, like I get it. Like, you know, my siblings have never fought much, but like you could physically, assault your siblings and take the soap. <laughs> like, I'm just saying, like, guys, it's not out of the ordinary for siblings. Like, get some duct tape. Just go in their room, dig around, find the soap. Yeah. Get yeah. get one of their books and, like, threaten to rip it. You know, like, come on, do That's, some sibling shit. Do some sibling yeah. shit. Yeah. Like, come on, we all know how to, like, know get how to something out of someone when it's yeah. your sibling. Like, my siblings could have easily gone into my room under my bed and found my secret Pringles stash. Yeah. But then, they, then I would have ruined their lives in mm -hmm. return. Uh, anyways, 
Moving on. That's my favorite story so uh, far. Maybe we'll get an update on that one. Uh, I really more hope clarity, we get an update More on clarity that from one. the comments because oh I, goodness. I am confused by that. Story. I it's need an update. Hide. You're so poor. Everyone, go on Reddit, find this post, and say, please, we need an update. Are mm -hmm. you okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where is the update on the soap, comma, give liquid? Me, uh, I want people <laughs> in the comments to give me clarity on what they think the situation is because I'm, I am admitting I. I'm confused by it. They made me want this brand of soap. Like this must be the <laughs> best soap in the world. Like yeah. nothing Maybe feels that's the like golden it. soap. Yeah. Uh, here's our last one. Uh, this comes from our relationships. Uh, oh. uh, it was reposted on Am I the Devil? So we'll Ooh. see. Uh, uh, it's a 29 year old man. My brother, who's 31, is marrying my high school sweetheart, who's a 28 year old woman, and I refuse to attend the wedding. Ooh. Messy. I am excited. I, a 29 year old man, dated this girl Val, who's 28, that's a fake name, when I was 17 and she was 16. We were close, we swapped virginities, but I found we were incompatible around the time I turned 18. Val was understandably upset. I told her she needed to let go and it took her a year to move on. As time went on, I regretted breaking up with Val, but she was in a committed relationship with someone else by the time I realized I wanted her. About five years after breaking up with Val, I found out she had unknowingly moved three blocks away from my house. We hung out a few times and I walked her home from work since we also unknowingly worked right across the street from each other. I took this as a sign that we were going to get back together, but Val unfortunately told me that she no longer has the feelings that she did when we were in high school and that it's best to stay friends as we were. I was sad, but I respected her decision. I ended up moving to a different state shortly after that. A year later, my brother Nick, 31, had asked me about my history with Val. I was confused on how he would know her because they never met, and Nick was already out of high school when Val and I met. I sugarcoated it and said she was just a high school fling. Nick asked if it would bother me if he started to hang out with her because at the time, his best friend was just murdered, and her long-term relationship had just ended, and they both wanted someone to f their feelings out with. <laughs> I said I didn't care given the circumstances. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. It, so many if that things. That was a lot. Uh, I said I didn't care given the circumstances and it probably wouldn't last because they didn't have genuine feelings for each other. This was in 2019 and now in 2023, Nick and Val are planning their wedding. Nick asked me to be his best man and I said no. He was confused and I told him he's marrying my high school sweetheart and there's no way I can stand at the altar and watch him marry her. He threw in the fact that he asked me if he could date her before even doing anything and I said I didn't care and now all of a sudden I do. I told him I always cared, I just didn't think it would last because he's such a dickhead and she's the sweetest person you'd ever meet. It was sucky situation, <laughs> and they even started hooking up in the first place, and uh, it doesn't make sense that she chose him over me. He said that maybe I should have realized what I had before calling it quits with Val. I guess he told Val what I said because she later messaged me saying that we were little kids when we dated, and I needed to let it go, and it's weird that now I'm suddenly not okay with them together when it's been years since it first started. I didn't argue with her. I just informed my family that I wouldn't be attending the wedding. My mom, stepdad, and most of my family are taking Nick's side, saying it's been well over 10 years, and I had the chance to speak up while my younger twin siblings are on my side, saying Nick should respect bro code. I'm at a loss right now. Am I being unreasonable, be, uh, refusing to be a part, let alone attend the wedding? Should I just keep silent and let it happen? Um, uh, <laughs> this guy, <laughs> he's, he's, he is a whole asshole. He is, <laughs> he's an entire butthole. Some people really tell on themselves with just the way they write the whole yeah. thing out. You know, like. Yeah. Um, Bro, I'm sorry you're just not as cool as you thought, and you didn't become the rock star, and you weren't also on the Packers. You, like, <laughs> what did you think your life was? Like, it just sounds like he's so upset that he was like, oh, I'm doing great in life, and I'm gonna leave, and you know, we're not compatible yeah. anymore. And then he left, and then he realized that what he thought was gonna happen wasn't gonna happen. He's like, the only time I was happy was when I was with Val, because she seemed to care about me, even though I was an asshole. Let's see what she's doing. Oh, she's with my brother. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, uh, really quickly, something I want to like, so the first indication that I didn't like this guy. We hung out a few times and I walked her home from work since we also unknowingly worked right across the street from each other. I took this as a sign that we were going to get back together. And I'm uh -huh. just like, what? <laughs> what, man? Like, yeah. you just immediately were like, we're you gonna, you we're don't gonna know, get it's back a sign. together. What was the year gap from 
them dating to her moving nearby? Uh, about five years after breaking up with Bro. Val, I found out she had unknowingly moved three blocks away from my house. And then five more years later, okay, I've just, okay, here's my main thing with this guy. I, he, I feel like he acts like he doesn't have a phone. Like, <laughs> he only had two instances to communicate with his brother. One, when, he, when his brother first started dating her, and then two, when he's marrying her. There was like, billions of hours and moments in time where he could have texted his brother and being like, actually, yeah, this is how I feel. Yeah, even in those two times he didn't actually yeah. say how he felt or what the truth was. Yeah. yeah. Also, when he started regretting going away from her, he could have reached out at any point. He also could have told her how he felt yeah. before she was ever involved with his brother. Right. Like well, so he did. Many, he did, and she, and she said, said she I wasn't don't have feelings for you anymore. Oh. And then he accepted it. So yeah. that should have been where that ended. Yeah. He only views her as an opportunity for him. He doesn't view her as a person and a friend. Right. Which sucks. It's it, and it's yeah. a trend that I notice sometimes uh, in these stories, and just the thing that happens in life when someone's dating someone, it. Whoever breaks up with whatever, but if if five years pass, that's a different person. Yeah, that's you don't get to just be like, oh yeah, so we can pick up where we left off five years ago. It's like you're still yeah. seventeen in your mind, right? Like okay. yeah, yeah, because like we are different people. When you're in the in the teens, especially late teens, you're potentially a completely different person one year uh, right. from from the previous year. Right. Like yeah. a lot has changed, and she the the now fiance is definitely right to being like, we were kids. It's weird that you're fixated on this very juvenile time in our lives, like, and you haven't moved on. Like, you can't even, you can't even go to the wedding. Like, yeah. if, it, if you were hurting and that heartbroken, you had thousands of days where you could have said something. And yeah. Also, I'm gonna be honest, like, look, I'm just gonna say straight up, it is much harder for them than it is for you. Just gonna throw that out there. It's much harder for your brother and his wife to be like, yeah, that occurred, but like, we love each other. And obviously like, it's not gonna get in the way, but like, that's gonna be awkward that he's gonna be there. But you know, it'll be, it's much weirder for them than it is for you. Like, yeah. you can just be happy in the moment. Like, he had to like, be like, oh yeah. Like, now I remember that you were like with my brother, but that was a long time ago. Like. Any level of weirdness is like, like it's already gotten, like they've communicated through it. Like you're, yeah. you you don't have to do anything. Yeah. Just show up and get the free food. He yeah. admitted too that he was like, I sugarcoated our relationship and just, well, but I didn't think. Like, bro. And they didn't date for more than a year because it, we, they dated yeah. when he was 17, and, but when he turned eight, around the yeah. time he turned 18, they broke up, so. Mm -hmm. I know people like this where they just like really hang on to things that are so light years away from who anybody is now. Yeah. And it's like, you gotta move on. There's I can understand the uncomfortability of oh, like yeah. a sibling. Has he not someone. dated anybody else though? Like, sorry, I don't, I don't mean it, to cut you off. It's, like, it seems, I don't know, it, it I don't <gasps> know. It's um, just, it's been a long time. It, it really sounds like this is just pure jealousy. Like he's, yeah. it's, it's probably is yeah. upsetting. It's upsetting for him and, and yeah. I, I get this of this was a person that at least, at least these past couple of years, he's been like, oh man, I really wish I was with this person. And now he has to see her happy in another relationship and he yeah. has to see it for the rest of his he life. He needs to see his brother having yeah. what he wants. Yeah. yeah, and so I get that that's tough, but you gotta, you gotta recognize that it's like, that is hard, that's a tough feeling. And I have no choice but to accept that yeah. and move on from it and be happy for my brother mm -hmm. and happy for yeah. her. It, it just it feels like you're not treating this girl as a person. Because oh, like, absolutely. she's involved in this too. She has say in she's this. She's a trophy story. to him. Yeah. He's the center of their story. Right. Like he like he obviously need, is a very selfish person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's a comment here. You literally dumped her and told him it was okay to go out with her. And then someone else said, yeah, but that was like 11 years ago, man. It's still fresh. <laughs> and then someone said, so you're telling me there's a chance. Uh, uh, someone else said, this is someone you dated for what, a year, over a decade ago? Dude, come on, LOL. Mm -hmm. I, I, I agree. I can't relate to this story. Mm -hmm. uh, I also don't have, like I said, my brothers are not in similar age where that yeah. was ever a thing, like, uh, yeah. but, or a concern, so. Yeah, but like when it comes to, cause I've, I've had instances where my sister reached out and be like, hey, do you know this guy that I'm potentially gonna go on a date with? You gotta tell them everything. You gotta mm -hmm. tell them, even if I didn't date the person, it's like, oh, here's what I know about him, this, 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 cause it's like, they're about to potentially enter a relationship. You mm -hmm. gotta spill the tea, this is your family. Like you should, I, I think it's great when siblings can have that closeness and be just super honest about it. Like. Yeah, um, another thing in here, uh, there's no official bro code. 
The everybody's bro code is so it's different. So like different. <laughs> that is so weird. Like bro code, you can't marry the love of your life. <laughs> bro code, like, what? man. Bro oh code, you can't be happy. No, yeah. yeah. No Sorry, way. bro. No, Sorry, bro. That was my favorite. Yeah. That was my favorite on this show. Yeah. I love when you're on this uh, show. It's also the only time I've ever heard bro code used as in like, no, that's for <laughs> brothers. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's bro. Bro code was never intended for siblings. Like the bro code was like, uh, but also bro code doesn't exist. Yeah. Huh. <sighs> I just think like he should you open can't up. Your life. <laughs> you, can't, you can't marry the love of your life, dude. Bro, bro code. Come on, come he on, man. Should, uh, he should take his brother's yearbook, open it up, see who wrote Hags, call that number, <laughs> and get married. Real quick, get a baby before the other one. Oh, oh. man. Uh, well, thank you guys for being here. This has been fun. Yeah. yeah. This has been crazy. I love hearing different families, like sibling culture. It's because it's so yeah. different in every household, but it's also very much the same. And it's just like homes and families are like this own bubble of like, they have their own plane of reality. Uh, and it's, yeah, I don't, I feel seen. Mm -hmm. It is, it, that's so true, the like plane of reality. Cause some of these stories, I like can't get my head around them, mm -hmm. but I'm like, yeah, but for them, that's the yeah, world. That's like the that's world. their world like, they live in. Knife, and that you know? is, that is, <laughs> No, you know? it's so true. Only among siblings and family can a poop knife exist where it's like, that's fully normal, man. Yeah. There, there is an entire inner familiar, econ inner familiar economy. I can't even speak. There's an entire economy based on soap. That's all I want to say. I love that, it. That's yeah, so it's true. A society, and a it's society, very really, That's very mm -hmm. real. Every single one of these families lives in a society. Uh oh, Great society. Job. Great job. All right. Uh, well, thank you guys for being here. Yeah. Um, let us know what themes and subreddits we should cover in the comments below. Next Saturday, Amanda and Angela are gonna be here and um, it's, it's, uh, it's all about cheating. And I directed it. And Courtney directed it. And, uh, and it's, Kimmy directed this one. And Kimmy directed wow. this one. And Kimmy. You directed next week? I directed the future. <laughs> and I am a hologram. And you can't marry the love of your life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you later. Bye. Bye.